Hi, my name is Gary Fosley. This is Functional Medicine Fast Track. And today I want to go through just briefly a question that is asked me all the time and I can fully understand why. And the question is, how do you use labs and genetics in a physiotherapy practice? And there are usually two parts to that that are asked. It's first, how do you order or access them? And the second part is, how do you understand them and integrate them into the practice? Can we do this? So let's go through the first part. First part is just accessing and ordering labs. So the joy is most patients can actually order their own labs nowadays. So it's kind of out of the, it's changed. The world has changed completely in the last few years. Regulations are completely different. You see on television now, 23andMe, Ancestry, you can order your own genetics. You can go to Direct Labs, Life Extension, get your own blood results. So there are other platforms out there beyond that that are accessible to facilitate with patients. Um, the only thing you have to realize is that you can't, as a physiotherapist, go and order bloods and put it through insurance. But you can certainly direct and facilitate these processes. The second part is to remember that you are not trying to diagnose anything by getting the lab results that we use in functional medicine. Functional medicine are different lab results and genetics that we use to understand the underlying root cause. Now that is in everybody's scope of practice to identify and understand these underlying root causes to the nth degree. And what I really have begun to realize is before I started understanding labs, blood tests, urine, saliva, whatever it was 10, 12 years ago, that you really had to be a genius to understand the patient that was in a chronic state with all kinds of signs and symptoms that you could not get right because you're so limited to what knowledge you actually had. You didn't understand their genetics and what inefficiencies they had in collagen formation, in bone remodeling, in detoxification processes and their antioxidant system. So there are many inefficiencies that are possible that can actually hold your patient back and if you don't understand that you can take an example of just a patient that you may be having as far as a sporting situation goes and you're going to push them back into a uh, their sporting field after a long injury and they may have genetics that they require a slower process to move forward and we see this in a gene called MSOD or SOD2, which is superoxidized dismutase and is the strongest antioxidant in the mitochondria to prevent oxidative damage. And when they are homozygous for this particular C2 exchange in their genetics, they need a slower period to build up those enzymes again to cope with the oxidative stress in the mitochondria and not to get recurrent injuries and fatigue and whatever else may come along the way. So as simple as that, it can be very specifically applied to a rehab setting with a patient that is chronic neuromuscular skeletal and wanting better rehab. Not difficult to kind of see how that pitches in. The other area is genetics nowadays. Patients often come to us with all their genetics. And what we are finding is Patients have got all these numbers out there from their labs, from their genetics, but there aren't enough practitioners and clinicians out there to be able to understand how to connect the dots of clinical signs and symptoms on the one hand and these genetics and lab results that they're getting on the other side. So we need some highly skilled practitioners out there to be able to connect the dots of the data that the patients are able to get pretty easily and then this health base that you should be very familiar with. You learnt about the mitochondria, but do you understand how the Krebs cycle actually works? Do you know that you can do a test to actually know that all those factors through that cycle are working? That is key. I mean, we're working with mitochondria every day. We are working with any neural patient as you move a system mitochondria are actually being there is biogenesis of mitochondria just through that activation so if you 
are unaware that that mitochondria is now inefficient for certain reasons, then it's going to help you to make that patient better quicker. Simple as that. So we've got to understand that we're in a time now that we need to have as much data collected as possible. One set of data that we need to collect is and understand are specialized labs and genetics. So if you understand that connection, then it makes sense. The next step is to understand that you need to be connecting the dots of these clinical signs and symptoms to all the data that you can collect. And what we are finding is that the data that we're collecting on a traditional learning perspective is limited. We need to be understanding that we have to collect data beyond just the neuromuscular skeletal system and understand the data that we can collect with all the other systems working within the body. So once we understand that, then it makes sense that we need to learn it and understand it. And it has not been facilitated in a lot of allied health professionals teaching and learning courses. But it is a gap and that is why there is so much health and concerns out there and public are really crying out to say, please guys, as health professionals, lift your game and help us. Because if they understand it, if you can educate them, they will change their lifestyle factors far quicker than you actually realize. And that is key to understand. Have an educated patient, you're going to get better outcomes. So I hope that makes sense as far as labs, how to assess them, that's a no-brainer. And then it's about connecting the dots to the clinical signs and symptoms and what you're finding in all that data. So. My name is Gary Foslu. This is Functional Medicine Fast Track. If you have any other questions or queries, please go to our website, functionalmedicinefasttrack.com or the shortened version, fm-ft.com and you can see more information there and we'd be more than thrilled to speak to you and be in touch and answer any of your questions. So, until then, take care. Bye.